What's up, Kerbalnauts? This is Noel on PC, head of the Experimental Research Division here at the Kerbal Space Program, and today we're continuing uh, day something or other of our multi-day, multi-week adventure. Today is a build and test phase. We've got a new new uh, update. came out yesterday, I think. Better than ever. It's the new 0 .90 uh, update. It sees a lot of new parts and some new features within the Kerbal Space Port Center area. The the you can exp you can you can level up your Kerbals. That's what I was trying to say. You can level up your buildings and apparently some cool shit like that. But what it also did was revamp some of the parts. Uh, this is the new uh, uh, control module. The Mark what do they call it? The Mark III cockpit. Yes. So the old cockpits dead. They killed them. And unfortunately, instead of sort of forcing a conversion, they just made them so you can't use them. Contains locked or invalid parts, and if you try and load it, you're dead. It just crashes. Well, it doesn't crash, but it just goes back to the load screen, basically. Um, so we are going to rebuild our multi-purpose re-entry vehicle using new parts. So I've heard that there's cargo bay. Is this it? Yes. Aha. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, let's, um, for future use, we're going to stick a decoupler in there. Where the fuck are my... There we are. I know, I'm noticing that they changed everything around where things are in this uh, listing. See, I won't say it's not intuitive, but I can already tell it's going to give me grief. They've moved everything around, but you can sort things by mass. So heaviest first. Yeah, and it works. Or size, size. Size and weight or sizes in surface area. Size, okay. Uh, cost, neat, okay. Uh, let's go back to name. Oh, that's why it's alphabetical, okay. Um, that would help if you knew what things were called. Let's close that guy up. We're gonna go to fuel. Lots of new fuel. Um, we want oxidizer. There we go. Good. And 4.6. Oh my god, that's a heavy, heavy thing of propellant. Okay, should we take the propellant? Like, I know we could easily use this much in space. You know, a lot of our, our movements up there are done with the mono propellant. Maybe like a half tank. Does that weigh any less? Let's do this. So, okay, the difference between empty and full is only a ton. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, 25, 20, 24.7 to 28.7. Oh, okay, so yeah, I'll fill it like 400. There we go. And that'll keep the weight down. Um, do I want to do the same with that? No, we're going we're gonna to need that. We're gonna need all the fuel we can get. Um, 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 um. Wings. Yes, let's start with the wings. Okay, so we need something that's gonna gently slope back. That might, that just about might be the surface area we're gonna need. Do I have anything that maybe slopes a little less? Yeah, no. Uh, that one, nope. How about this one? Oh, it's the exact same sweep. It's just shorter. Okay. And, oh, that's it. That no, wasn't. That wasn't a whole lot of choices. Okay, I could start with like one of these at the front. Yeah, I'm not putting a wing that high in a shot a little mental. How about if I do this? Ah, take that. Stupid game. Game. Zero. Null. One. Okay. We're going to put ailerons on here. Elevators. Because there's no way this thing is going to make the required amount of lift. Unless we hide... 
Some ailerons in there. What the hell is going on? Come on, go right there. Is that gonna be enough? I mean, that's a big sweep. It's gonna come way out. Yeah, no. Um, just, I'm really worried about that sweep. It's gonna be really big. But then again, do we have a choice? Yeah, no, we don't have a choice. We need surface area. I want it to be like, you know, sleek and aerodynamic and cool looking. The James Dean of aircrafts. But that's just not gonna happen. I wish I could tell it to put it under there. Hmm. Okay, maybe if I take this guy off. Much better. Now, can I put it back on? Guess I don't have a choice with that. Okay, we'll just continue doing that the whole way back. Good enough. Okay, and we're just gonna continue building these. That nope. Whole way back. We're just going to push all the way to the rear. All right, we need more of these. Almost in line. Just got to push it forward just a titch. With that, check. All right, how about if we just do this? We're going to put in another something. Yeah, and then we'll copy that. Roger, copy that. Come on. Good enough. Good enough. Check. Check. All right, how does that look? Oh, I guess that looks, that looks proportional, right? I suppose. Yeah, it looks proportional enough. I'm okay with it. So we'll put on a rudder. Hang it off the back just a little bit because I want this to be able to open. Beautiful. Can I close it while it's opening? Yes, okay. Um, oh, elevator. Good enough? Good enough, okay. Um, let's just really quickly pop some struts in here just to give it some structural rigidity. One on each side. They don't have to be big. Just a little something something. There we go, things are happening. Things are happening happening. Things are snapping. Should we do it underneath? Might as well. Conformity. One more. And for the sake of strength, let's do that. Good enough. It's on both sides, right? Check. Okay. Just in case. Cool. All right. So she looks strong as all hell. She looks big and burly. There we 
go. Now we're gonna grab some engines and we're gonna stick them on there. We placed the little um, structural pieces just to give us something to attach a tri-engine to. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we want them inset a little bit. We're actually pushing them into the craft like so because we're not attaching to this outside. We're actually attaching to the other side like so just to get them inset just a little bit so they look more flush. I really don't like the way they, you know, monstrously stick out. Now, just in case, <laughs> just in case, I'm going to stick a little parachute on the back here. There we go. So if we need to slow down upon re-entry, it's there. It's a nice safety net to have. Now we need landing gear. Um, structure, we'll use one of the big squares. We'll just turn it sideways. Where's the center of mass? It's always good to know where your center of mass is. Okay, so it's way towards the back. So I want it right around here. I put two of them. Of course, it's not multiplying that work for me. We want two. Alrighty. One. And two. Beauty. Okay, so we got one on each side, and then we will just slap, slap into base, man. Just gonna slap some wheels on this bitch. We're gonna put quite a few, because basically, the more you have, the harder you can land. Because these things are, you know, totally glide machines, uh, and they're very heavy, you want to be able to kind of pop the weight down on the front. Sorry, on the on the back wheels. You really want to come down the back wheels, but you don't want them to blow out, essentially. So you want lots of landing wheels. Perfect. To take that weight. Um, let's stick just a single. And stick a couple of these somewhere. A couple of uh, photovoltaic cells. How about something like this? Yeah, do that. That's way better than my suggestion of just picking up this. Oh, that didn't line up at all. <laughs> that looked in line where I was sitting. Nope, taking that last one off. Four is good. All right. I mean, this looks pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. We're just gonna grab a couple last struts. We'll do this. To make it go right through to the other side, I'm gonna do that. Perfect straight line, beauty. Come to the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Nope, apparently I lost it. There we go. Boink and boink. Looks good. Looks very, very nice. Very, very, very nice. Just one more for lateral rigidity. How about here? To here? Yeah, there we go. Just a little something, something to help. Okay, so let's let's test fly this fucker. Now that we've spent a boatload of time building it, let's see if it flies. All right, so we added some RCS, we added some air intakes, and got the staging right to cycle those. Okay, there we go. So now, now, we're finally ready to fly this fucker. Okay, so we're gonna put the brake on, put T on, SAS, throttle up, get these things spooled up, and then we're gonna pop the brake as soon as it starts rolling, if it starts rolling. It's got a lot of braking power, so it might stay put. Bring that up. All right, it has too much braking power, so we're just gonna pop the brake off. We're gonna begin the first test flight of Kerbal Shuttle number two. 
Let's walk in a little titch to the left, get it back on straight. Good enough. Looks cool. Looks badass. Now, of course, this is meant to be launched, not flown like a plane, so a takeoff would be highly unlikely given the weight of this craft. We got some lift. We got some lift. We got some lift. If, they, if I pulled up earlier, it probably would have flown under its own power. But there we go. It flies. So what that means is in regards to a re-entry, it should be able to uh, come back around. Let's um, let's see. We'll just do a quick fast forward, get some distance between us and the spaceport. And I guess we could like just bust a big loop <laughs> or something. Let's see how nimble this craft is. We is there a cockpit view? Oh, that's really. All right. <laughs> like, not even the inside of the craft or anything. Nothing. Here, have some black screen. Have some default black screen. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. This thing actually is really nimble. I almost put too many elevators and stuff on. You can see them all underneath the craft there. Flaring up. Yeah, there's almost too many of them. It's almost too nimble. But there's no such thing. There is absolutely no such thing. When it comes to craft like this that are big and heavy, sometimes too much control is a very, very good problem to have. So yeah, this is definitely a success. This actually flies quite a bit better than the last one, than the old Mark II uh, reusable shuttle. So... I'm going to hope it lands as good as it flies. Sometimes when they're really touchy like this, trying to make little movements as you're coming in to land makes it uh, you know, a little sketchy, a little sketchy. But I'm going to reserve judgment, because sometimes the sketchy planes are surprisingly easy to land. Sometimes they're impossible to land. <laughs> Just all depends on the pilot, really. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Alright, we're bringing the, th the throttle back a bit. I'm going to make a minor course correction here. Check. Throttling down some more. Brakes are on. Nice and in line. I don't want to slam, but I want to shed a ton of this height. Oh, can't see anything. <laughs> Boink. Nice and gentle. Beauty. All right, a successful test flight of the new reusable spacecraft. Yeah, that went pretty well. That went swimmingly. That's pretty much how you want that to go. Uh, now the next step is to put this fucker in space to uh, launch it and hopefully rendezvous with the ISS. Yes, that's a whole different story. Um, you know, this is a lot heavier, I think, than the last craft. The last craft, I had a nice launcher built for it, and it was very stable, and it was nice and symmetrical weight-wise. I don't know if that's going to be the case with this one, but in the next video, we will launch it and see if we can rendezvous with ISS and bring it back safely, because that's the plan. So, guys, I hope you liked the video. Hope you share the video. Hope you comment on the video. Hope you do something. Hope you have a fun holidays. Merry Christmas, by the way, BTW. Uh, guys, until next time, cheers.